Hi, this is Ann Crow with Precision Physical Therapy, and we're going to do a virtual running gait analysis. This is the third runner that submitted her videos, so we'll call her runner three. We're going to start with the side view, and first we look at the foot, and as we see her come into the screen, we see a nice forefoot to midfoot strike, the nice vertical tibia. We see the same thing on this right side. So uh, forefoot to midfoot striking with a vertical tibia. What does that mean? Let me show you. As she contacts the ground, her first point of contact is here. And her foot stays relatively level this way. And her tibia is pretty close to straight up and down. Those things are good indicators for decreased risk for injury. So that foot strike pattern um, is very important uh, in terms of where is the foot relative to the knee and the center of mass, and also how angled is the foot um, into um, dorsiflexion or plantar flexion, um, rear foot or forefoot striking, how angled is it when it hits the ground. And so she has a very lovely pattern here. Additionally, she's got great knee flexion. So when we think about um, this angle here, she's got a good amount of knee flexion as she loads that leg. And she doesn't gain a ton of knee flexion as she continues um, through, um, but she's starting in a really nice amount of knee flexion. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, during her swing phase, uh, her tibia comes to horizontal which looks nice. And a toe off. So in a toe off, she's got good hip flexion. So we would say in her swing phase, she has good hip and knee flexion. Um, and we also see, uh, which is nice, is a nice parallel pattern here as she's coming through a toe off. Uh, she's got a good, subtle, but a good forward lean. Uh, that's, you know, zero, five to seven degrees. Um, so good forward lean posture there as, as we see her come through the screen. So let's start again. So foot, foot flat, uh, four foot striking, vertical tibia, good knee flexion, um, nice forward lean, good knee flexion, in, so good knee flexion and loading, and then good knee flexion and swing phase, and then nice hip flexion and swing phase here with a lovely forward lean. And as she continues through the screen, the only other thing I want to point out here for her is that her pelvis does tilt forward quite a bit, which does increase the amount of extension in her low back. This may or may not ever be an issue here. It could be um, a result. It could be a habit or a result of shortness in the hip flexors. Um, from this view, we can't tell which hip flexor but it's just, it's present. We always want to look at the other side and see is there anything different that we see on this other side. So here, nice forefoot strike, vertical tibia, good knee flexion. A little less knee flexion on the right than she had on the left at loading. So not quite as much there, but I would say that's still in the normal range. And then again, as she extends her hip, we see the same pattern where she's getting a tilt and an increased extension in her low back. Oftentimes with individuals that have a little bit of decreased hip extension range, they tend to move more vertically and we all want as much of our energy to move us forward as possible, especially if we are um, competing with ourselves or with someone else and wanting to run faster. And for her, we do notice that as well is a little bit of increased vertical motion. Now, this is not a perfect measurement. None of these are perfect measurements. <laughs> Um, as the athlete runs through the screen, but we do get an idea of what's happening. It would be better, you know, it'd be better on a treadmill, better yet in a lab, but try to identify when she's at a low point, you know, where, 
you know, where do we think her center of mass is there um, as she's loading the leg. And then in her swing phase, um, at the top of her swing phase, This would be a similar point. And it just appears to me to be a little bit more than to two to three inches or six to eight centimeters um, that are generally considered normal. So we're talking about, you know, what is, what is the distance here relative to the distance here? And just, it, it looks a little bit more to me than two to three centimeters. And we could always uh, measure a point out, and I, I recently wrote a blog about this if you'd like to read about it. We could always uh, measure a point out on her body. Um, so for example, if we had a small piece of tape in one spot and in another spot, and we knew that the distance between those two spots was six to eight inches, um, then we could compare that to what we measure in this frame to see is that is it a little bit more. But I suspect it's a little bit more. She has a little increased vertical displacement, possibly be due to some stiffness in the hip extensors, which we want to test in the clinic, <laughs> make sure that's what we're seeing. So next is back view. And we see some symmetry and some asymmetry. She is moving away from the camera um, in a little bit of an arc. So when I, you know, the angles could be just a little bit off. But what I notice here is that she does have some hip drop that's present. Um, and that has to do with glute med weakness, as we've talked about in the other videos. Or poor recruitment, weakness or poor recruitment. And then here as well, she has a little bit of hip drop. And on this side, she appears, it's not quite that much. And on this side, she appears to be crossing midline. So if there's you know, a line drawn down the center of the body, it appears as though her foot is coming pretty far on the left side over, um, over that midpoint. However, she is changing directions as she's running. Um, since this is a circular pavement, that she's running on, which could uh, affect some of what we're seeing. So it does appear to me that she has a little bit of a crossover step step, and a little bit of um, hip drop, which could be related to um, glute med weakness or lateral stability. Again, that's the most common impairment that we see in running gait in the clinic. And it does tend to create an increase in quick pronation when the foot crosses over midline to that extent. So watch her foot, I'm watching her ankle here. Her calcaneus very quickly moves this direction. Um, and if you think for the foot to be flat on the ground and the leg to be crossed over this way, the foot has to get to meet the surface of the ground. And so as the leg crosses over midline further, there's increased pronation motion is required from the foot just um, because the ground is, you know, flat. Uh, that crossover pattern does contribute to increased um, amount of pronation and increased rate of pronation, which can aggravate structures on the inside of the leg. And so, and that could be, uh, so here that motion being so far um, this direction, so that, you know, things that could be irritated, you know, the medial calf, the posterior tib, um, the Achilles tendon, um, or the tibia, all of those things sometimes can get flared up if there's a if there's a crossover pattern of this much. I do notice a little bit more thoracic rotation to the left than to the right. So, and what I mean by that is she's getting a little bit more rotation this way in her thoracic spine, but I would say that's very subtle for her. Um, I don't think it's necessarily significant um, or something that she needs to work on unless she was having some back discomfort. The other thing to think about, since she does have potentially have some increased vertical displacement when we look from the side view, and on this view we see a crossover step, it makes me wonder um, about her cadence. If her cadence is on the low side, then she'll have more time um, to move vertically in her running, and she'll also have more time to cross her legs over. And so checking on her, 
she may want to check her cadence um, or have her coach check check in on her cadence um, because that if it's low that could be a really easy way to um, address some of these patterns if they need to be addressed you know if she's having a discomfort but otherwise everything looks pretty good from this view and so uh, let's go ahead and see our front view And in this view, we see that quick pronation here. So if we're looking at the ankle, so watch the ankle on the right side, right there, we see a pretty quick pronation motion. Um, and we do also see that the knee is, is diving in just a little bit. Um, getting a little bit of valgus there, but that may be because she's getting ready to change directions. So for this view, um, we do notice the hip drop on, on um, when she runs on the front view, but I think from this view, because she's in such a circular pattern, um, the angles um, that we're getting on the screen aren't gonna be as helpful for us in, in terms of comparing right to left because she's not running straight at the video. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna give too much information analysis of this view because um, it, might, it might look different if, when she's right at the camera um, and we don't wanna, wanna be accurate as best we can as possible. So um, in summary for runner three, uh, excellent foot strike pattern. Um, lovely vertical tibia, good hip and knee flexion and swing phase, um, a nice subtle forward lean, uh, maybe potentially some decreased hip extension range as you appear to be getting a little bit more motion um, with the pelvis tilting forward and the back. You might be moving a little bit too much vertically um, and that could be related to cadence or it may not be related to cadence. It might just be related to decreased hip extension range. Um, from the back view, uh, there is some hip drop present and so working on glute med and lateral stability um, might be helpful. You might wanna talk with your coach about that. And overall, just a very lovely running pattern. So um, I hope you get to enjoy running this summer and uh, thank you Runner3 for the opportunity to assess your videos. Um, let me know if there's anything I can help you with in the future.